The problem with this recorder is the quality of the audio and I think it's because the head is dirty and also probably one of the internal rubber bands, something like this, that actually helps the motor to turn around, probably is too old and it doesn't have proper traction anymore. I'm going to show you how it sounds. That was an experience. So basically, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Also the fast forward and the rewind date don't work. So let's take it apart and see what's going on inside. Looks like there are only four screws and this is the battery compartment. Okay, this part seems to come out pretty easily. Let's see if there's any cable connected. No just came out very easily. Uh, this sponge here is quite rotten to clean that up. So checking the rubber band, it doesn't look that bad, but probably it's too loose. And pro that's the reason probably it's, it's not getting traction the motor to, to play properly the cassette or doing the fast uh, forward and rewind. As I suspected, there is a screw behind all this dirt. Well, there it is, a rotten sponge. It feels like an old uh, cookie. Lovely. In order to change the rubber band, I need to remove this part here and also I will need to move, remove a little bit the PCB so I can access the other one down there. I'm going to use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Try to clean up this a little bit. So first let's try to remove this one. It's a very, very strong one. Uh, I don't think the screwdriver is good enough to handle that. So I'm gonna get a bigger one. Maybe this one will do the job. So I don't want to ruin the screw. Yeah, you see, that's dangerous because I can ruin the screw and then I won't be able to move it. You know, actually I don't need to do that because I think I can pass the rubber just by pulling this a little bit up and pass it through that. Let's see. Yeah. Good. I bought a set of rubbers from Amazon. So let's see which one is a good one. There is also some grease in it, and that's obviously very bad because the motor will run around and, and will not get traction. This looks like a good candidate, maybe. But we also need to remove this one. So I don't really need to remove the PCB actually because I can do it from here, I think. It's a very tiny one, and I think this might replace it. Let's use isopropyl alcohol, another one, to clean up a little bit that using a cotton stick. The alcohol will remove all the dirt and also the grease that looks like exists in this part. That shouldn't be any grease, but who knows where it comes from. It's too old, this thing. This was way dirtier. Also, I realized I need to clean this one because it creates traction here. So if there is grease and dirt, it's not gonna rotate properly. So look at that. 
I wonder how much of this dirt is actually the rubber that is falling apart. Anyway, I think I'm gonna leave it this for now. Let's proceed to put the rubber bands. Okay, let's give it a go. Let's see if it's able to actually fast forward and rewind the tape. Mm, no, this is having a hard time. The sound is better though. I will also clean the head. I think that the problem is that the, the um, rubber band is too loose. As you can see, when I change, you see how it moves. Probably is that the problem. I'm gonna try to put a smaller one. Maybe we can create more tension. This looks like a little bit more has a little bit more pressure. Yeah, no. It's a bit better. No, actually it's very bad. Probably it's not a problem of that. I wonder probably it's the motor that is old and doesn't have power anymore. Fast forward is okay. But rewind it's not that it still struggles it's interesting it depends on the position somewhere it's touching and it goes well here it goes faster and now it's lower obviously something is loose but i have no idea why when i turn it for example here it goes way better as soon as i move here it goes slower and it struggles. I don't know the reason, but probably it should be okay for me at least to use it to pass the games uh, from the cassette to the computer, because as long as I, I'm able to play the game, to, to, to reproduce it properly, it should be fine. Now it's going quite okay. Don't know, it's very strange. <laughs> I have no idea, there must be something about the, the, the pressure, some um, spring or something that probably in that position didn't work, who knows. But for the time being, I think we can, let's see how it sounds. This one has a tone here, which is important that we take into consideration because that changes that changes the way the wave will go. And so in order to convert that audio into, um, into a file for, for the, the emulator. So we need to be, to be sure that that sounds is okay. Anyway, this is the first time I'm doing it. So let's see, we were gonna learn in the next video when I actually wanna try and see how is the process to back up these Commodore 64 tapes into the computer. I'm going to keep cleaning this for now and see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching.